greetings from heaven i'm here to do the continuity of the previous message which i sent to the world concerning the dread of god that is about to come upon the world and in that message i told us that i will be teaching on the third testament on the third testament how the the, the ministry of prophet tb joshua started it and how the ministry of the young prophet is going to finish it that's what I, I i told us i was going to do and then i stopped in verse 14 in our previous message and i said i'm going to continue from verse 15. now before i continue i just want to do some flashback i remember there was a time here i told us that i was in the spirit and i saw the lord he came with an ark and he gave me that ark and said go and gather me the 12th tribe of israel go and gather me the 12th tribe of israel now that ark was not a physical ark like the case of noah is a spiritual ark and there are mysteries attached to that ark that i didn't unveil because i don't like digressing when i come to teach a message i focus on that message i i dissect the message i elaborate on it so you can understand that message then i come another time to do analysis on things that i have not talked about so and that is why i would like you to follow my sermon sequentially not missing the point not missing an episode knowing fully well that time we prompt me to do a flashback to the things which i have taught before and then in order for you to understand the things which i come to teach again now when he gave me that ark, he said gather me the 12 tribe of israel and that is what i'm doing that's why i do tell people that my message is not for everyone it's not for the samaritans it's not for the babylonians it's not for the gentiles or the Chaldeans. it's for the lordship of israel he strictly told me the 12th tribe of israel so when these people hear my voice they will identify when they hear my voice they will understand that this voice is not the voice of a mortal person he is the voice of god speaking through a man and that is why i always tell us that i'm a transmitter now in other words there is a testament of god that is committed to me to go and interpret to the world so that we understand the time they are and that is why all this why i've been telling you that i teach prophetic and astrological sermons not the kind of sermons your pastors teach the drunkards who don't understand what i come to teach they will tell me to teach things that they are already familiar to familiar with things that they are already used to the kind of messages their pastors teaches and sometimes you begin to wonder oh why do i mention the names of men of god and you begin to wonder oh why do i always talk about the man tb joshua the young prophet child of god the testament given to me is the third testament and it includes every general every minister and every prophet now when your pastors come to teach you see them they open their bible and they tell you what happened in the life of david what happened in the life of elijah that's the old testament and they go to the new testament and talk about what happened in the life of jesus john and the rest of them that's the new testament now what happened in the third testament who will talk about it if god does not choose a man to come and unveil it so those men who existed in the third era are the people who what acted in the third movie of God so a man must come to talk about them and how can I talk about them without calling their names and when you come to teach about the old and new testament your pastors do call the names of these people sometimes they they explain things that sounds comely about them things that sound acceptable and sometimes they talk about their mistakes that does not mean that they are being malicious or acrimonious towards these men they talk about why dishing out their sermons that is the same way i come to call your pastor's name and teach because i'm not teaching the old or the new testament only but i'm teaching the third testament that is the message he gave to me and that is why i call every names so that we understand the time and the era we are now if you look you will discover that there is a spirit that anchors every testament and in every testament there is a a a, a, pro, a, a protagonist the major character in every testament do we discover that when the bible talked about prophets they didn't just describe moses as a prophet they they describe him as the law that is what the bible said the law came by moses in other words the old testament and grace and truth came through jesus in other words the new testament 
So, and I told you, and I taught you mysteries concerning the old, the young prophet Moses and Jesus. How their ministry is synonymous, and how God has sent them to their generations to liberate Israel from Egypt. And God caused them to operate strangely. The way Moses conquered Egypt was not the way Jesus conquered Egypt. In the case of Jesus, there were some mysteries that confused the world that they didn't understand. And I told you also how the young prophet fought Hades and how he has been battling in the spirit world so he can what take victory from the roots. All these things I have said in my previous message. So what am I trying to talk about? Moses is the founder of the Old Testament. Jesus is the founder of the New Testament. And the young prophet is the founder of the Third Testament. But why God sent Moses, he sent Aaron to accompany him. Why God sent Jesus, he sent John to prepare the way. So why God sent the young prophet, he sent the man prophet, T.B. Joshua, to prepare the way. So that is why I told you that that T.B. Joshua is the man who started it. But the young prophet is going to finish it. Now, if you look at the book of John, you will discover that the Bible said there was a man called John who was. So they started explaining mysteries about John. He was the first person that they started with. The first story they talked about in the book of John was the story of John. So later, the story of Jesus came in. So when the story of Jesus came in, then the case of John ended. His ministry ended. But Jesus also talked about him in his ministry. So that is continuity of legacy. Just like the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua is going to continue, the legacy is going to continue. But you must understand the difference between a man's fulfillment, a man's accomplishment. When a man is fulfilled, when a man is achieved already by God, and God now says, oh, your ministry now, from now, is terminated, so that another man can take that gap. These are some of the things I come to teach us. So, now, God committed the ark of the Third Testament to me to analyze. And I still remember I came here one time and I told us that I was in the church and the Lord gave me the book of Isaiah and gave me the book of Jeremiah to go and interpret, to go and read to the word. And you must understand that the, the New Testament came as a result of prophecies. Isaiah prophesied Christ, Jeremiah prophesied Christ, Ezekiel prophesied him, many prophets prophesied him. So when he now came into existence physically and lived among men, and these things were experienced, so men noted it down. They were documented, and it was not called the Third Testament, but it was prophesied by men who lived in the Old Testament. Now that things which were also prophesied in Isaiah and Jeremiah and other places in the Bible concerning the young prophet and the man prophet T.B. Joshua are playing out, a man must also come to document this, this and call it the Third Testament. And that is why I am doing my documentaries through my sermons. Now, you must understand that it wasn't just the Old Testament that prophesied about them, but the New Testament also, even as the Old Testament prophesied the New Testament. And that is why I taught you mysteries from the book of Revelation concerning the, the two witnesses. And one time I came here again and I told us that God said that the spirit of the young prophet is the spirit of the seven seas. He said the mantle that is given to him is what the spirit of the seven seas, that mantles are spirits. So the mantle given to him are what? The spirit of the seven seas. And if you check the book of Revelation, these things were prophesied that they will happen in the world. Now that those things are happening, if a man does not come to teach prophetically and astrologically in an analysis of things which we already documented. How will you now understand the testament you are? This is why I call this. This is why I talk about everybody. Because they all are included. So when Moses came, he was not the only one that exists in the old time. Many people existed and they were all documented. But there is a man who the Bible ties the old testament to and they call it the law. The law. So he said the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. So you must understand that the Bible also said that all the prophets and the law prophesied until John came. So it was Moses that they described as the law. They have taught you that mystery before. And even the law itself also prophesied. So my point is that among the majorities in the Old Testament, a man was so what? Cyclopean and gigantic in his calling that the Old Testament revolves around that man. 
The same thing happened with Jesus. Moses was not the man that existed first in the Old Testament or the man that existed last. The same way Jesus was not the man that existed first in the New Testament or the man that existed last. But yet, this testament were tied to this man because of what destiny holds. That is the same way it is with the case of the man, the young prophet and prophet E.B. Joshua. Now let me show you something that will make you understand what I'm talking about. I just use these stories to lay foundation. Now verse 15 of the book of Revelation chapter 11 and the seventh angel sounded. Now you can say that nothing happened without a trumpet being what sounded. The angels have to sound for things to start playing out. That's why I told you in one of my previous messages that the whole earth is static. It is static. So for a thing to, to start happening in the world, there must be a trumpeting from the heavenly rain. I told you that the world had been what static, but for the world to start moving, a scene need to be what unveiled by the reason of a trumpet that is sounded, and this trumpet have been sounded again. That is why the whole earth is burning right now. That is why there is fire everywhere, and that is why activities that were there before are what activated back towards life. So men are now will be mobilized by this spirit, but some people will be mobilized into pits, and why others will be mobilized into an act of safety that God will use to preserve the remnant to see the new Jerusalem. Now, and the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Verse 16. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. Child of God, these elders are seated before God. They are not playing there. They are orchestrating this with God. Verse 17, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servant the prophet, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest should destroy them which destroy the earth. There are people who are destroying the earth with their mouth. They slander the people of God. They persecute them, and they concord all manner of wickedness both spiritually and physically the time for them to be destroyed has come what, what prompted this part I just read it is because there are things that happened before this part I read which I have taught you in my previous message concerning how they killed the young prophets and the man prophet T.B. Joshua the two witnesses how they frustrated them and shamed them so this is the spirit that is powering this destruction that is about to salvage the world. That is why I told you that you, you should not poke nose, you should not comment, you should not behold the shame so they won't use you as a mop to mop the shame. Now verse 19, and the temple of God was open in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. Child of God, did you hear that? The ark of what? His testament. So we have the old, we have the new, but we have God's testament. Have you read that book? That is why I tell you there is a scroll in the spirit beyond the Bible that is piled and coupled together for you to read. So when you enter this realm and start reading this scroll, you will understand the things I come to teach. You will understand the spirit I came with. You will understand why I teach the way I teach. Why I am different from others. And you will understand why my messages appear very judgmental. Why they carry dread. Because this is the spirit that will bring about the next world. This is the spirit that will bring the next kingdom. This is the spirit that will bring about the kingdom of God. In the earth and the tabernacle of God coming and God dwelling among them. Verse 19, I read again. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. Child of God, there is a temple in heaven that you have not visited. And in that temple, there is what? An ark of his testament. There were lightings. Child of God, before they said the lightings, 
you will see a punctuation mark there. Please read with me. Go to the Bible and see what I'm talking about. That punctuation mark simplifies the act of his testament. That word, punctuation mark simplifies the word, the ark of his testament. Now I read, and the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. Now simplification. And there were lightings, and voices, and thunders, and earthquake, and great haze. Meaning, this testament is carrying a spirit, and that spirit is the spirit of lightnings, is the spirit of voices. Is the spirit of thunders, is the spirit of an earthquake, and the spirit of great hail. And if you see, when the Bible was talking in verse 13 of this revelation, the Bible made us to understand that there will be earthquake, and that earthquake will kill thousands of people. So you must understand that the life of prophet T.B. Joshua and the life of the young prophet is the spirit and the power of the New Testament at work. And many people are featured into it. Just like the days of John and Jesus, the Pharisees were featured into it. The priests were featured into it. The scribes were featured into it. The Sadducees were featured into it. And the congregation were featured into it. The publicans and sinners, they were featured into it. But there were two men sent to that era that anchored it John and Jesus and that is T.B. Joshua and the young prophet so when you see men now attacking the man prophet T.B. Joshua it is because the first called John devil that is why they are calling T.B. Joshua devil and when the young prophet shall come they shall call him devil also and antichrist because of the manner he shall come with John the same way they call Jesus the, the, a, a devil that is casting demons with the priest of devils which is Bezebon so you must understand time and you must understand Understand season. There is a spirit that is sponsoring what you are seeing, and this is the spirit of the seven sea. And the temple of God was open in heaven. Child of God, pray until God help you visit this temple. This is the place where they kept the spirit of the young prophet to nurse him and to inculcate him with this knowledge so that when he returns to the world, he will become a tabernacle of God because he has been in the tabernacle of God in heaven. He will become a mobile temple. So when he opens his mouth, things will begin to come out that are heavenly, that are mysterious secrets of God. And these secrets we help men to mature. We help men to grow wings to fly like birds. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. That is the ark the Lord Jesus gave me and said, go and gather me the twelve tribe of Israel. The ark of his testament. The things I should witness. Because God has gathered facts from the old lives, which is the Old Testament, and gathered facts from the New Testament, and coupled them together and brought a mysterious pattern that should conquer Satan when be exhibited in the earth. But he must transmit through a man. So all the analysis I've been doing concerning men of God, what I'm actually doing is that I am teaching from the word, the ark of his testament. I am teaching from what? The third testament. These are the things I have read and these are the things I'm explaining. That is why you can see me come. I begin to tell you a man's spiritual tribe. But these things were not noted in your Bible. But from the Bible which you have read, the old and new, I come with cogent and concrete evidences to back the things I am teaching you which you have not read about which they have not taught you because where I am teaching from is from what the third testament of God but I need to go from the old and the new for you to be convinced because if I should come with that scriptures you will think I'm telling lies that is why I, I use the things that you know already to explain the things you don't know and if you look at the ministry of Jesus while he was teaching he was making parables so that he will make them understand things that are hidden from men that is why he told Nicodemus, if you don't understand earthly things, how then will you understand heavenly things if I teach you? Because earthly things are things that men are familiar with. So Jesus cannot tell you the stories of a sower, of a sower rather. And that sower is not a physical sower, but is using him as example of spiritual word, sower. 
and the seed is not a physical seed but is using it as an example of a spiritual seed which is the word of god so that is how i come to use your old testament and your new testament to explain your third testament and you are living in that third testament yet you don't understand it i can't finish what i came here with but i i came with this message to lay foundation but i will come and start teaching things on this third testament in the aspect of doctrines in the aspect of liberties which god has given to men based on time these are laws that were once beneficial profitable to men but now the devil has crept into these laws he has used the laws as a shield and is now using the law to kill them the law has become death that is why you saw jesus at a point he came and he started amending things and he made us to understand that he don't come to condemn Moses law because the law was actually meant to preserve men to keep them from destruction and detriment but when the law became detrimental because the devil started managing it against men through wickedness so jesus came to what correct some certain things physically it will look as if it's attacking the law but he's not actually attacking the law he is making those laws based on time because the laws that men were used to we are no longer saving that is why he told the pharisees when they came to confront him about the sabbath he said that laws are made for men not men made for the law so he said the son of man is the lord of the sabbath so it means if the law that was made for man can no longer help man that law is like a salt that has lost its taste and jesus said that salt is good for nothing but to be what casted away so when a particular law can no longer help a man that law should be what done away with you have to do away with the law so there are things i will come to teach you which are the liberties of god the bible said in galatians chapter 5 he said better ye are called unto liberty only use not liberty as an occasion for the flesh but by love serve one another so when the laws and the commandment becomes bondage child of god it is no longer needed in such an era there must be another law from the spirit that will bring liberty And while he was giving me this act, he said, I am sending you as Moses. So you must understand that the spirit of Moses is the spirit of lawmaking, is the spirit of revolution, is a spirit that comes to receive things from God, just like the Holy Ghost. We not speak of his own, but whatsoever he received from the Father, he shall what commit to the apostles. And that is how the apostles came about with some doctrines and some principles in the church based on times. And if you read the Bible physically by letter, you will see a lot of contradictions. But if you go by the Holy Ghost, you will understand they are not actually contradicting. They were teaching based on error. They were teaching based on time. Because there are some certain things that were not needed in a particular generation. Because the devil came and mastered a generation and mastered its law. So when the devil mastered the generation and her laws, the devil started using that law against the generation. So for the generation to be buried and saved, God had to what? provide another law to save them. Not because the law is bad on its own. Not because the law is evil, but because the devil has used the law against them. If you study the episodes of Apostle Paul, you will understand what I'm talking about. He said, without the law, I was once alive. But when I had knowledge of the law, I died. The he now said, is the law evil? No, the law is not evil. But he now said that the law of righteousness in Christ Jesus has delivered us from the law of sin and death. So you must understand when the law starts producing sin and the law starts killing, is no longer important. So God will produce another law that will bring men to righteousness and bring men into freedom from what? Sin. So there are a lot of laws that the church is still holding on to. And that law is what the devil is using to prompt and to stir sin in the church. Especially the sin of adultery among pastors. And the world do not understand yet. But when I come, I will teach on these laws and we understand. What I have been doing all this while is explanations of stories. I've been demystifying mysteries about the story of the man, Prophet E.B. Joshua, about the young prophet is coming, what he has been through, about your pastors, how they fed the man, Prophet E.B. Joshua, and how they fed God. These are the things I've been teaching from the Third Testament. But the hour is near where I will begin to teach doctrinal things concerning the Third Testament. And these are prophetic. Now, before I leave you, let me read this again. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was 
seen in the temple the ark of his testament not your old not old not new not the traditions of men which your pastors preach not the commandment of men for the bible said they preach for doctrine is the commandment of men but god's testament and is an ark and i told you this ark is not a physical ark like the case of noah or the ark which the children of israel receives but this ark of his testament is spiritual and he has given it to me and is the word of prophecies the word of knowledge the word of revelation of mysteries and it's also tied to new doctrines that will bear men from sin and death because the devil has mastered the first laws these things I'm, I'm teaching you now are dangerous and delicate and if you are not careful you might miss out and your life will become a sacrifice that will bring men to fear and knowledge of what God is actually doing in this era. The Bible said that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. He didn't say sin as his people. So you can say I am God's people. You can say oh I have been with him. I have knowledge. But he said you, you can still perish. Because your knowledge has not advanced beyond the, 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 the previous times. So, men are living in the present and in the future, but people are living in the past, in their present. This is a great delusion and destruction. Now, if you study the book of Isaiah, the prophecies of Isaiah, in, in continuity of what I was teaching you concerning verse 19, that the simplification of the word, the ark of his testament, is what? Lightness and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail now let's see what the bible said in Isaiah 29 verses thou shalt be visited of the lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise this great noise represent voices according to revelation and with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire now you can say that whatever that was said in Isaiah 29 verses is in alignment with what was said in the book of revelation but in this place they didn't mention ark because it was a secret but when they came to revelation they mentioned ark because time started simplifying but even at that a lame man who is not back by angel will not understand what the ark of his testament represents just as many of you have read the times with that number yet you don't understand that that ark of his testament is talking about the third testament but men came with prophecies and with rumors of what they heard from the man prophet tb joshua and said that he said that god gave him the third testament but they don't know that these things were prophesied in the old testament and in the new testament which is revelation that i just read and Isaiah that i'm reading now so you must understand that the spirits of that ark of his testament which is the third testament is the spirit of judgment thou shall be visited with the lord by the sorry thou shall be visited of the lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire so what will prompt all this judgment it is because the life of the young prophet and the life of prophet tb joshua what was their life they were persecuted they were rejected they were not accepted and they killed them just like they killed the righteous Abel and Zacharias and God will require their blood and the blood of all the prophets that are crying under the altar which is the grave against this generation so the spirit of the third testament is the spirit of judgment thunder earthquake great noise storm tempest flame of devouring fire also noted in the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 19 so you must understand that we are already in the third testament but those who will see the goodness of God and his glory are those who will listen to the things which I am teaching because I am teaching from the third testament I'm not teaching what your pastors are teaching they are in the past I am in the future so those that must see the future must journey with me this is the voice of heaven son of David Wisdom is crying in the street of YouTube. I see you again.